Hey, I'm Mark Stevens, author of Government and Died on my website, markstevens.net. The radio show is called The No State Project. We're live every Saturday from 4 to 7 Eastern Standard Time on LRN.FM. And uh, just to try to make this a quick video, but there's a lot to get to. Uh, it's not the most common uh, retort that we hear regarding uh, the applicability of the law and jurisdiction of these people who call themselves government. Uh, most of the time they insist that there's evidence, but we're just stupid because we don't accept it. Um, so I have a lot of videos going into that, how, uh, like, for example, I'll mention later that Scott Bales from the Chief Justice of the United Arizona Supreme Court said that the evidence proving that the laws apply to me because I'm physically in Arizona is because they've prosecuted and put other people into prison, that being just a garden variety appeal to consequences or the argumentum ad baculum, uh, doesn't, yeah, it, it's fallacious. It does. It's not evidence. Just because you put other people in prison doesn't mean that your laws apply to me. So this one, this, I've never heard this one actually in court, but, uh, it, it, it's, um, but when, when a statist is confronted, especially uh, someone who's got a lot of uh, time and energy invested into the system and, and maybe their whole career is based on being a politician or a bureaucrat, when they're, when they're confronted with the fact that they can't prove that their laws apply to anybody, what they will sometimes do is say, oh, you see, Mark, you're, you're an idiot. You're coming from a faulty premise. You're asking for evidence proving the laws apply when that is not an issue of evidence. It's, see, laws are a matter of philosophy. And uh, it, it, so it's, it's wrong to ask for evidence where none is required in the first place. I mean, this is absolutely ridiculous to, to make a claim that I can do X, Y, Z to you because a piece of paper from 200 years ago said so. And I ask you for evidence proving that that ridiculous claim is true. With ah, philosophy, you know, so it's a way of getting around the question and your complete lack of evidence to just say that it is philosophy. Now, philosophy is a pretty. I mean, we know what it is for over two thousand years, and so a quote here is the rational. The rational investigation of the truths and principles of being, knowledge, or conduct. And it's the rational discussion part that the critics and the haters leave out. So they'll put forth a, a, an irrational, easily disproven claim and defend it by saying a rational basis is not required. Starting to sound like uh, religious zealots to you? So we're supposed to accept it on a matter, as a matter of religious faith. They can make certain claims. These laws apply to you. These rules apply to you because you're physically in Arizona. And if you ask for proof, ah, religious faith, it's philosophical. Why don't they just say it's religious in nature? See, the whole thing of them being God's uh, servants on earth hasn't really gone away. Uh, so anyway... Um, See, you know, that's the thing. Having a prison, a prison system means never having to support your claims. See, philosophy deals with how we know the truth. It's not an answer to a question of evidence. So uh, and just calling something philosophical doesn't make it magically philosophical and somehow abstract, and that relieves you of your burden of proof to prove that your claim is actually true. So how a written instrument from 1787 applies to me today in 2016 is not a philosophical question. It's an evidential question. Support your claim. Uh, this is especially true when the claim involves robbery, kidnapping, false imprisonment, and, and, and death. So philosophy is a rational investigation, so it's logical to expect that one will have proof to support one's claim. So claiming something is true uh, because you say so, that's obviously irrational. Uh, and so my asking for evidence to prove that political rules apply to me because I'm physically in Arizona is a rational investigation into the truth. Uh, that is no more philosophical, I think, than if you say, hey, Mark, you owe me a thousand dollars. And I say, well, what evidence do you have that I owe you a thousand dollars? And you just you can't. Well, philosophy, dude. Uh, yeah, it's not going to cut it. And so while I don't see uh, people called jurists uh, as experts in anything other than public relations, they have said, and this is Gideon versus Wainwright, even the intelligent and educated layman has small and sometimes no skill in the science of law. They didn't say the philosophy of law. They said the science of law. That, it's supposed to be rational. 
Uh, see, the critics and the haters will never take the time to explain why their claims are philosophical and don't require any evidence. I mean, how do you prove beyond a reasonable doubt that I violated your sacred code if you can't prove it applies in the first place? So, like I mentioned in the article, we're not talking about abstractions. This is not theory. These are not hypotheses. We're talking about actual claims dealing with, you know, when people with guns, real guns, and they're saying that real written instruments, just like uh, the Maricopa County attorney had said, these are real. The documents are real. And so I have, uh, we'll put up uh, a copy of the, like, say the Arizona Constitution. These are real observable things. And they're saying this written instrument from 1910 applies to me for no other reason than I'm physically here in Arizona. Uh, no, you see, but th that document, the Constitution, unlike Plato's writings, which are actual philosophy, are supposed to apply to me, like I just said, for no other reason. I'm physically in Arizona. I don't have to be accused of violating the law, but just because I'm here, all of their rules apply to me. Uh, okay, so, uh, so that what this philosophy tries to, what they're trying to put over on, on you is that Basic principles of right and wrong don't apply to us, the government. Imagine that. The principle of do no harm doesn't apply to me because I'm a government. Ah, oh, talk about, I know you're a gangster is what you are. So just saying it's philosophical doesn't relieve you of your burden of proof. I could say the same thing. Okay, and I'll, I'll cover that in a moment. Uh, so maybe those making this claim think that saying it's philosophical magically relieves them of their burden of proof of having a rational explanation. Well, when under the, all that paperwork is a gun, yeah, you see, when you force people to pay you, that means never having to have a rational basis for your arguments and your, your opinions. Uh, so really what it comes down to is you do as we say or we will kill you if you resist. Uh, and, and so some people get caught up that I'm using a technical word, jurisdiction. And even if we completely eliminate jurisdiction from that, their territorial jurisdiction and all their jurisdiction is based on, if I'm physically in the territory of Arizona, their rules apply and that gives them jurisdiction. But if we just strip the word jurisdiction out and we talk about control or we just talk about the applicability of their sacred writ, it, do, it, it doesn't make a shred of difference. How does a written instrument... Right there, should be. Okay, how does a written instrument from 1910 apply to me today just because I'm physically in Arizona? That is not a philosophical question. That is just a question, uh, an evidentiary. Let me see the evidence to support your argument. And as I mentioned before, no less an authority on the law and its applicability than Scott Bales, Chief Justice of the Arizona Supreme Court. He didn't even try to make the philosophy claim. He insisted there was evidence, and he believed that the evidence was because they put other people in prison. Okay? Uh, again, I covered that already. It's an uh, argumentum ad baculum. At no point in front of over 100 lawyers at the ASU Law School did he ever say, Dude, <laughs> it's philosophy. You don't need evidence to support it. Uh, so, yeah. And I'm not saying that he's right just because he's the chief justice. I'm just bringing out why would a Harvard Law graduate not just say to me in front of all those attorneys, dude, or Mr. Stevens, you're asking a question with a faulty premise. You're asking for evidence where none is required. Uh, because what they don't want to do is have to admit that, that oh, so you can't prove your laws apply which is exactly what I've been saying, which is why under the success stories of markstevens.net, we have so many successes. Uh, and in my experience in court, which has been vast, in and out of court with prosecutors and judges and attorneys, and bureaucrats of all stripes, not one of them, not one of them has ever said, dude, philosophy, we don't have, you know, they've said they don't have to prove it, but then they back off that real fast because then you can nail them on prosecutorial misconduct. They're actually making arguments without evidentiary support, and they don't think they need to. That's a rigged game. They're taken as irrefutable that, hey, the laws apply because you're here, end of discussion. That's a rigged game. And uh, see, the mafia has a philosophy like that, too. It's uh, F you, pay me, just like we see in, in the movie Goodfellas with Paulie. F you, pay me. Oh, 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 receipts down this week. F you, pay me. Uh, see, ordering me to pay you or you'll throw me in prison is not a real philosophy. It's just a threat by a criminal, and it's the mind of a psychopath. Uh, so 
some of the critics, and we'll try to wrap this up here, some of the critics actually try to claim a rational basis. They say, well, the people agreed to have government. There was no historical basis for this whatsoever. No one was given a chance of whether they were going to have a government or not. You just had it. You may have had a choice on the form of the government. You may have had a choice on who was going to rule you for two to four years or maybe eight years. Uh, but that's not agreement. Choosing a new slave master every four years does not make you any less a slave. It's not agreement. Uh, so some, again, there was one video where they said, well, it's like a, it's a social construct like property rights. I'm like, well, no, actually, no. Property rights seems to be, at least to a degree, certain amount of mutual respect and agreement. You put your labor into this or you traded for this and we leave it alone. We acknowledge that you're the owner. Uh, not so with government because you're never given an opportunity whether you want the services or not. You're physically in Arizona, you pay, you go to jail. End of discussion. Um, so if it's, a, it's a, if it's a philosophy, it's a very poor and irrational one. It doesn't provide any rational basis to prove that these rules that they just write down call, and call them constitution and laws, there's no evidence whatsoever to prove that they support, that, that, that they apply to us, and there's no logical, rational explanation for why they would. You can say people agreed, but the facts are against you. Uh, okay, so this is the last point, and it really gets to the heart of how stupid of a situation this is. If you can claim that your laws apply to me without, and it doesn't require any evidence, well, then the obverse is true. The opposite is true. I can claim as my philosophy that your laws don't apply to me, and I don't need a rational basis because you don't have a rational basis. You see, unless we're going to get into a whole double standard, which is exactly what they try to do. So, uh, hey, you know, hey, your laws don't apply to me. Why not? Philosophy, dude. But you know what? Anarchy is a real philosophy whose merits, uh, it doesn't require guns, terrors, terror, and prisons to persuade those who haven't given up their ability to think rationally. It's based on a simple premise of do no harm, okay? And it's taken this philosophy into court and challenging them on that sacred cow that of jurisdiction, why we have been so successful on three continents, yes, including Israel. We've had things thrown out in Israel. So, if you doubt what I presented here, you're more than welcome to call into a live broadcast. You can contact me at markstevens at mail.com or markstevens at uh, dot net on the website, and I'd be happy to schedule you as a guest to come on the No Stay Project and show your evidence or your rational explanation why these laws apply to me or anyone else just because we're physically in the U.S. or Arizona. Again, my name is Mark Stevens. The website is markstevens.net.